What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and this is an unboxing and review of the Nerf Rival Phantom Core Prometheus. Okay, you guys, this box is humongous, so we're going to go over it real quick, and then we're going to go straight into the unboxing. So there's only a few things I want to point out, first of which, this thing is going to come with a rechargeable battery pack, which is awesome. I'm really excited that Nerf is moving into this direction. It's really cool. I liked it with the Terra Scout, and now we're getting it into Rival, and I think that's awesome. It's going to be nice not having to replace, you know, a zillion D batteries every, you know, couple days. So that's really, really cool. And this is supposed to shoot eight rounds per second, which is awesome. A little bit faster than the Nemesis. So that's really cool with its advanced acceleration system. So that's pretty awesome. It comes with 200 rounds, which is sweet. Show you the back of the box real, real quick because this thing is humongous. All the different rival blasters on there and all the different colors. So pretty darn cool. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open. Okay, you guys, it is very difficult to keep all this in frame. We lost some rival balls during shipment, I guess. We threw those back in the box and we got all the accoutrement laid out here. So let's go ahead and go over it. So obviously you get your big, awesome Prometheus. You get your 200 rival rounds. You get your handle that will attach onto the front of the blaster. You get your bandolier that looks awesome, by the way. You get two rival flags one in red one in blue you get your rechargeable battery you get your two foot holder stand guys and then you get obviously your charging cord along with some instructions all right you guys this is the prometheus and we're going to go ahead and throw on the attachments that we need to to make this thing complete we'll go ahead and throw on the handle grip up front here i'm sure you can put it on either direction which is nice and since I'm right-handed I think I'm gonna put it on this way so I can be gripped with my left hand so you just slot that right in and that is on there I don't know if you can take it apart after you put it on there I'm not gonna mess with that right now but I'm sure you could with some force but probably not meant to come off once you put it on so that's pretty cool and then we will go ahead and throw on the feet there's two different sizes one the one's bigger and one smaller so I'm assuming the bigger one goes on the back it looks like it go either way, so that's pretty cool. Just slam it on there, and then we'll put this one up front here, and there we go. So I got this sweet bandolier here that's really nice. It kind of reminds me of a suitcase strap, which is interesting. And then these are plastic, but they are very nice. So we'll go ahead and throw this on the front part. There's bandolier attachments on both sides of the front barrel there, and then there's one back here. On the back side of the blaster, this one actually rotates around, so that's kind of neat and will, should kind of adjust to wherever you, it's positioned on your body. So you can throw that over your shoulder and you're ready to go. So since I'm sitting down, I obviously don't need this, but I wanted to kind of show you how that went on and how it looked. So let's go ahead and charge up that battery, throw it in the blaster and see what she's all about. All right, battery is charged. We'll go ahead and slide it on here. See how easy this is. Slides right on, no problems. And then we will lock it down with the screwdriver. And there we go. So this battery is really cool. I like how they kind of molded and designed a custom battery for this to kind of complement the shell. Really neat. And it actually has got some rubber on the back of it. So if it's dropped or hit back here, nothing's gonna happen to the battery. I'm pretty sure it's pretty safe on there, even though it's kind of exposed, which is, interesting design choice but I kind of like it actually and one thing I want to note real quick before it turns off is when you insert a battery you will get a green light showing it is fully charged and that will stay on for I think two minutes before it turns off if it's flashing red that means it's a low battery and if it's a constant red it is a completely depleted battery now if you put in a fully charged battery and you're having any sort of issues up here it's not showing green if it's showing red there is a reset button actually on the side. It's really, really tiny right there in the Phantom Core logo. And you'll just get a pin or something and push that and it's supposed to reset 
the whole blaster and hopefully then it will understand that you have a fully charged battery so that's something that you definitely should take note of if you have any issues and the green light has gone off so there you go so this blaster is humongous but it's interesting when you take off the hopper here that it actually becomes pretty minimal and really doesn't have that much dead space if you think about it i mean you got a humongous agitator here which is about twice the size i think of the nemesis which is pretty cool then you obviously have your flywheels up here this awesome barrel which i just think looks super cool i really like this thing that's just a beast and a monster and then you basically have your electronics to go into this trigger portion here and then you have an, a battery that's external there it's actually not nearly as big as i thought it would be even though it is a big blaster obviously so We'll go ahead and throw that back home. Obviously this is removable, so you can clear any jams if you need to. So to work the blaster, you have a trigger lock here. And when this is up, it, you cannot push on the, the trigger or the rev trigger. So you can push it down and then you can rev the blaster with this underneath trigger here. And then this top one is what fires the blaster. So pretty interesting grip and handle and trigger area. Very different, obviously, from a normal blaster. It's more of a push button kind of a trigger so I feel like some people might not like that very much because it's not really like an actual trigger like a, a gun has so that's something that you'll have to note with this blaster that you really want to hold your blaster like this and you know just fire foam down range but this trigger lock I've noticed kind of is a little doesn't really lock in so it can like maybe shift want to that lock position without you really wanting it to and then you're not able to pull the trigger then on the top here we have a very mini rival tactical rail up top but this obviously will have to come up and down i'm not really sure you could put much on there or would want to it really doesn't make sense anyways the way you're holding this to put any sort of sight or optic on there but it is nice for looks and then the other one is actually on the bottom of the blaster between the two feet there is actually a rail underneath there, which I guess is just for looks also. I don't know why you would put a rail under there. I'm not sure why they felt the need to do that. No idea what you would put under there besides maybe some sort of tripod. So maybe they're coming out with a tripod of some sort for this thing that you could set it on and then just like, you know, that would be pretty cool. But right now we don't have any tripods for the rival line. So I don't know, maybe they're coming out with that. I'm not sure. Nevertheless, I think this is a pretty sweet looking blaster. It is humongous. So let's go ahead and grab those rival rounds that were all over the place when I opened the box and throw them in this blaster. All right, we got our 200 rival rounds and we will go ahead and try to put these into the blaster without losing them. This is a very big opening here, a lot larger than the Nemesis, so that is nice. Oh, and I already dropped one. There we go, perfect. And there we go and there's quite a bit more room there so I'm pretty certain you could fit quite a few more rounds in there now you can't fill it all the way up because it needs room to agitate but you could probably fit another hundred rounds in there be my guess so that's pretty neat that there's a more even more capacity than 200 on this blaster so that's that's pretty cool I will definitely try to fill up some more and test it out and make sure that I can still fire the blaster with you know at least 300 or so rounds in there. Now you guys may be wondering why I would buy a Prometheus when I have Typhon behind me here. And I mainly bought this because I wanted to do an honest review for you guys and it went on sale a little bit so it kind of enticed me to buy it. Now it also has a very interesting feature to me if I was to remove this battery which I wouldn't use when modifying it. I would use a LiPo obviously. It gives me a really nice placement for a shoulder rest and I thought that maybe down the road sometimes maybe I'll do something similar to Typhon but with this bad boy we'll see but uh, definitely some interesting choices could be made here when modifying this thing so with that said let's go ahead and take this thing outside put it over the chronograph and see what kind of performance he's getting okay you guys I was able to fit 300 rounds in the hopper there now that is cutting it pretty close in my opinion there's still a little bit of room so I think 300 rounds should work just fine but I probably wouldn't recommend stuffing too many more than that in there because that agitator probably won't have room to agitate so let's go ahead and put the Prometheus over the chronograph and see what kind of performance it's getting now because of this 
blaster being uh, held a little differently. I'm gonna hold it up to get chronograph readings and then we'll put the tape measure out and I'll hold it like you're supposed to down here and we'll get range readings. Now, let me know if you guys like seeing me get the chronograph and range data. Uh, I could obviously do this without showing you guys and then tell you the information a lot quicker, but I don't really get much feedback either way, so let me know which way you would prefer. I like showing you guys the data, but it does make the videos a little longer. So just let me know in the comment section below if you would. I'd appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get some shots over that chronograph. It's a little awkward holding it this high, but uh, hopefully you guys can see the chronograph and see the data here. 99, 96, 97, 99, 97, 94, 92, 89, 94, 99, 95, 99, duplet 92, 91, 92, 91, somewhere in that 90 to 100 range it seems like, so definitely getting that 100 FPS or around that performance, which is to be expected. All right, guys, let's put some shots with the Prometheus on the range. Now, this is going to be held a lot lower than a normal blaster, so we'll see if that hurts range too much. I'm holding it relatively flat, but it does seem to have some nice hop up that it actually makes the balls go higher. So that range wasn't too, too bad there, full auto. So pretty nice and a really nice rate of fire. All right, ranges. One, the shortest one, right on the tape measure there, right at 59 feet. And then we have the majority up here, probably more around that 70 foot, 71, 72 foot range. And we have one at 78 foot. We have one at 79, and then we have another one all the way up here at 88 feet. So darn good performance, and I'm sure if you just try to do a little one-two burst fire, your ranges will improve slightly. Let's go back inside, and I'll give you my final thoughts on the Prometheus. All right, you guys, so the Prometheus is obviously pretty darn awesome, especially if you like the way you hold this blaster. I mean, it's a little unpractical, but it could still feel some rolls on the field, just suppressing fire rolls, things like that. And obviously this thing's gonna hold a ton of ammo, so you should have no issues with that. Now, there's one thing I wanna mention that I didn't realize when I was first talking about this, but this does remove, there's a little button up here and you can take that right off, which is really cool. And I'm glad that Nerf is allowing you to remove handles or priming bolts or what have you on their rival line. Now, this grip, it's got a really nice texture to it. I really like it a lot. It really helps. But this plastic is really slick, and this does rotate around, which I think is, is good, I guess. Kind of helps it move when it moves back and forth a little bit. But it is a very slick plastic, and it would be nice to have that same kind of texture up here on this. Other than that, I think the blaster is pretty darn awesome. I was pleasantly surprised that the a little longer barrel on this blaster than other previous rival blasters hasn't seemed to hurt the performance at all so that's nice the range was really good the rechargeable battery is awesome and i think it's a great great buy if you're willing to spend that 200 dollars. and 200 dollars is a ton of money I probably would recommend still going with a Nemesis over this just because of that price tag and it's a little more practical of a blaster even though you can't hold as many rival rounds. But if you're really into this kind of look and feel, I would say go for it. The price will probably come down quite a bit in the next few months. I was able to get this actually for 150 bucks because it went 25% off at Target and then also Amazon.com. There will be a buy link in the description and that will be an affiliate link. So if you use that link, it will actually help out the channel and not cost you anything extra. So I would greatly appreciate it. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Nerf Rival Phantom Core Prometheus. Don't forget to smash that like button. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so you can be alerted to when I upload a video. And as always guys, Peace out.